He has performed on Ellen DeGeneres' show, So You Think You Can Dance Canada, and the 2010 Vancouver Olympics. I have the opportunity to speak with Luca Petuelli. You may know him better as Lazy Legs. Hi, I'm Juliana, and this is my You Talk. <laughs> anyone with higher spirits than our final competitor. My name is Luca Petuelli, aka Lazy Legs. I was born with a physical condition called arthrogryposis. So what that means is I have very little muscles in my legs. I've spent a lot of time in the hospitals. I've had a total of 16 surgeries. But he never let that get him down. From an early age, I realized I'm only disabled if I let myself to think that I'm disabled. I want to take the dis out of disability. So I've coined a term called ill-abled. Ill literally means sick, but today in the hip-hop world, sick means amazing. Don't look at my crutches as a crutch. Look at it as a new style of the dancing shoes. Stop him from becoming an incredible dancer. From Montreal, Canada, please welcome Luca Lazy Legs Petrelli. 50 50s, 4 slides, 5 0s. I was inventing my own style. Wow. And then what made you. Uh... <laughs> the Melissa Amblin, Marie Ellen Patenaud, c'était le projet RAD. For moi, ça, ça représente une famille, une équipe. As most people know, I'm Lazy Legs. So let's get started. In a few words, words. <laughs> what is Project Rad? Project Rad. Uh, sorry. No worries. So Project Rad is an inclusive urban dance program. It initially started off by certifying dance studios to make them accessible. Now we offer our programs uh, all across Quebec and in Ontario in schools and rehab centers. And we just want to make sure that everyone can dance. It's very interesting. What inspired you to create Pro Project Rad? Um, essentially, I always wanted to give an opportunity for kids with special needs the opportunity to learn to dance. Uh, dance has given me a lot of confidence and the opportunity to accept my difference. And so uh, my wife, Melissa, is an occupational therapist and uh, the two of us wanted to create an idea, uh, create this idea. And then we had uh, another friend, uh, Marie-Hélène Patnaud, and our friend Eric Martel from uh, Studio Rebels and Vagabonds. And the four of us came together and we created Projet Rad. Very interesting, actually. Um, who or what has kept you motivated throughout this, like throughout this whole Project Rad journey? And um, so uh, I, I would say that the students are what keeps us motivated. Um, I, th I think that no matter how much work we have to do on the administrative aspect or in terms of finance and budgets and how much sometimes things can get really draining, the minute you walk into one of our classes, you kind of forget all about that, and the kids give you a brand new energy, and so. Um, that to me is my personal motivation. Like I'm someone that definitely likes to be on the field in the studio uh, more than in front of my computer. But um, the work that we end up doing behind the scenes is makes everything worth it once you see the kids smiling. Mm -hmm. Okay, what success have you made with Project Project Rad, and what's your goal? Um, so so far with Project Rad, we started in 2012 at a dance studio here in Laval, Rebels and Vagabonds. We only had five students. Um, today, in 2016, we're in six different studios across Quebec. We have just over 100 students. Uh, we run our um, extracurricular activities in four different schools, plus we're expanding in Toronto this spring. Um, and we also won an award, or we received an award from the Governor General, a uh, Meritorious Service Medal, which is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so things have been going well, and I think in terms of the future, like, my ambitious goal is, is to conquer the world. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but essentially, anytime a parent or an educator or a therapist sees the RAD logo at a dance studio, automatically they'll understand that it's a safe environment for people with special needs. That's my, my goal, my overall goal. Okay. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I guess we've gone past that. So, um, 
How does it feel to know that you have left a positive impact on many lives? Um, I mean, I still feel like the, the, the work isn't done, you know, and I feel that, like, at the end of the day, it's if I'm having fun, then other people are having fun, and that's the way I look at it. The minute that I stop having fun and enjoying myself, then I don't think I'm making an impact. So uh, I just want to make sure that um, throughout this whole process that like I'm enjoying myself, and and that, and I know that by enjoying myself, the other people will be enjoying themselves, and they'll understand the importance of accepting their differences and, and being who they are. That's the most important thing, especially if you're a person with a special need. Um, a lot of times we f feel insecure about our differences uh, because we're in a wheelchair or because we're walkers. Or, and so through RAD and, and through my mottos, it's really being like, accept who you are, be proud of who you are, use what you have, and create a strength with it. So. <laughs> That's really cool. So how has your journey been from the very beginning before Project Rad, like, till this point? Uh, so from the very beginning, I would say that I've always been a very active child. Uh, my parents had to run around and chase me everywhere. Um, and to be honest, it's thanks to their support uh, that I am who I am today. They've never held me back. Um, they've always encouraged me. So any activity I want to do, it was never no, you can't do it. It was like, cool, let's find a way. And so I think that's what helped me give me this mentality um, and this attitude. Um, and so before dancing, I was skateboarding, and skateboarding was my one passion. But I used to swim competitively for a high school swim team, so I know the importance about integration and just being put into an environment feeling like everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, just... Like, growing up again, I guess I had a, a, a really close group of friends that um, we went through a lot of mischievous trouble together, so it was, it was fun, you know, and I think that um, my attitude and my mentality hasn't changed. Like, if you knew me from my high school or elementary school days, I'm pretty much the same person, just with a little bit more experience. <laughs> That's, uh, I like that. I actually really like that. Okay, how did you come up with Lazy Legs? Lazy Legs, um, so essentially Lazy Legs is, um, in the hip-hop world, uh, you always have a nickname. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I first started dancing, one of my friends uh, just came up to me and was like, yo, I've got the perfect name for you, Lazy Legs. And from that day, it just stuck. And I really like it because I think it gives a description of my personality. It shows people that... Um, I have two lazy legs, but I'm okay with it, and it shows people that, like, it's, it's like a funny name, you know, like, if, if you're not in the hip-hop world, or, and you see me walking down the street, and someone yells, yo, lazy legs, people are like, oh, that's mean, they think that, like, they're, they're insulting me, but that, it's part of the, the game, so, um, and it's a, it's a funny name, and so I think that all my close friends, they call me lazy, like, and it's just kind of stuck, and even my parents call me lazy now, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. Okay, so I was there... Anything you'd like to speak about just to wrap things up? or? Um, I think that it's important for everyone, whether you're disabled or not, to take the time to understand and believe in yourself. Because, and it's one of the hardest things to do. And to be honest, like, as easy as it is to say, just believe in yourself, there's a lot of moments where we reach some insecure insecurities, and there's, um, and there's a lot of moments where we just might be down on ourselves or we might want to give up. And... All of those emotions are totally normal. The most important thing, though, is to never give up. Never give up on yourself. And the minute that you can start learning to believe in yourself, others around you will start learning to believe in you. And once you have the encouragement of people around you, then the possibilities are limitless. And there's no excuses, no limits. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was it for this U Talk. It was very nice meeting you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you guys so much, and I hope to see you guys again soon.